Thank you, uh, everyone, for your patience. It took a few minutes here. Um, I'm here to remind you, you know, in light of, you know, many things I've seen uh, in California over the past few years uh, of a principle I was, I was taught when I was very young in my career, uh, and that's uh, not to poke fun at people who get hacked. So stop breaching, I mean, stop bashing breach victims, sorry. I obviously stop breaching banks. That got me in trouble when I was a kid. Stop bashing breach victims because it could happen to you. Uh, the first uh, thing we're going to cover is the first rule of computer security. The second thing that we're going to cover is news about some of our open source search siblings um, and, and some other topics. And then we're going to talk about the challenges of, of securing solar uh, and the challenges to strike a balance in general and the backward incompatible cha challenges to sol changes to solar that I wrote and then the checklist for upgrading and maintenance if this is an issue for you, which it may be. My uh, clickers. So who am I? Uh, machine learning, data science, hacker, open source, everything. I'm more on the data engineering side today but if you want to talk to me about anything security, ML, or open source, you can uh, contact me. Uh, at LucyWorks, I'm the Director of Development Relations. We have a development relations team that is responsible for all community efforts. So if you are in the community and you haven't heard about us, please reach out to us. And, and we're not the only ones. There are many other people uh, embarking on this effort, but we have to work together. It's going to take a diverse group of industries and professionals to actually accomplish search. If not for anything else, language. There are different tokenization. There are different tokenizers. There are different field types. Uh, and so that's why community is so important in search. Uh, like... And we have committers all over the world. You know, a little bit about me uh, is that, uh, you know, I started a, a security company when I was 23 uh, and sold it when I was 25. And I have been at LucyWorks since January because I came to Activate last year. Um, and I was so enamored and impressed by what the, the ability that LucyWorks provides people to get value out of their data, and I love the open source culture. I've been an open source hacker for, for many years, um, and this year we have hosted 20, more than 20 meetups around the world. Uh, Co-founder Eric Hatcher was my road dog in a lot of those meetups, but we've done meetups in, in multiple continents, three continents, will be four soon, uh, and we've also done meetups and, and multiple countries, well, obviously the continents, but even Canada. So if you're in a city and we haven't done a meetup, I want to hear about that. Um, and then just so you know, like I, I am in developer relations and that's sort of a, a community outreach PR function. I, I'm an open source contributor to a number of projects, many of them you use. Uh, I just submitted a patch to the Linux kernel, it's a small one, but there's another one coming. Uh, it's a little bit bigger, but you know that's a, a longer term effort. And the, the thing I want to drive home here is that LucidWorks invests in open source. It's very much a part of our roots, who we are, uh, and you know, gives us some, some competitive advantage to some of the other search companies because I mean they're using the stuff we write to build their proprietary products. So we probably can help you and the optimiza and optimizations and, and things, and even help them. And I would like to see them invest in open source. So the first rule of security, as I was taught, 
is that every system will be compromised at some point. And so you have to prepare yourself and, and, and staff your team to constantly and compel your team to constantly be evaluating ways to improve security and, and solar or your search solution. And a big part of that is because it's just an imminent threat constantly lurking. And the other reason is because you don't really have much of a leg to stand on. Like we're all, since we know this is gonna happen, we shouldn't throw stones at other people when we live in a glass house of open source. You can see everything inside solar. You can see everything inside that house. Uh, so uh, many of the tools that we use to build software, like Nmap, um, Jupyter Notebooks, and, and Python, the language in general, are very much a part of the attacker's toolkits as well. So tools that we use to build software and maybe even protect ourselves, they use uh, to go against it. So, you know, we need to be careful. I like to tell people, don't hate, appreciate. This picture reminds me of uh, the open source community as I envision it. It's like um, elephants of all different sizes, you know. Some of them are Apple, some of them are Salesforce, some of them are African, some of them are Asian, you know, elephants come in all different sizes and, and they protect each other. They don't let anyone uh, be attacked by an outside, like someone on the outside, rather than bashing each other. Uh, may, I, I think they must use those tusks for battling at some point, but they're probably friendly battles. Uh, so that's, all, that's definitely welcome. Now, there's... There is one aspect of reporting a breach that I think is important for everybody here uh, to, to kind of consume, which is if, if news is credible and timely, it's important for you to read about breach, breaches that are widespread because they could be affecting you. Um, you know, here you can see Elasticsearch ransomware uh, was in the many thousands. So ransomware, I don't know if you know what it is, but it's pretty bad, locks up your data, threatens you, holds you hostage, you have to pay them. Then sometimes when you pay them, they ask you for more money, like pay me again. So, you know, uh, this is helpful because it compelled people to, to, you know, take some basic steps to secure their elastic search clusters, like hiding the ports. The thing that I don't like is that the, uh, the, the lead, the headline says that Elasticsearch users were too dumb to practice basic security. That's not constructive, that's not what we need. Even if they were dumb, I don't know if they were dumb, maybe I'm dumb, it's just not constructive. Do something about it, and at the end of the article they do, but I, I, that stuff's not helpful, and sometimes developers do that, and I tell them like, no, go try to fix it. When I read this, I looked at the repo, thought about fixing it. Um, but I think some people know how that went. Uh, now, but the other reason you shouldn't, you know, attack people and just try to be constructive and provide credible information is because it can happen to you. Like, uh, LucidWorks, a much smaller, uh, not a much smaller, but it's comparable proportion probably, but, you know, there was a crypto mining uh, bug affecting a lot of solar users. Uh, 1400 and you know obviously the the folks the security folks in the solar community like Jan Hoidel uh, and, and, and Norway or Shalin Mangar who's here at the conference and a LucidWorks employee uh, they probably would have jumped on that right away I'll also be looking at it if it's a security issue um, especially if it's affecting data uh, and you know this stuff can happen to all of us it's important to strike a balance uh, and that's why I love Gary McGraw, all his uh, images. They have the yin and yang, white hat, black hat. You know, that's a big part of security, um, is striking that balance. And the balance is ease of use versus security. I know this sounds crazy, but like as things become more secure, they sometimes become more difficult to use. And so 
we have to be very conscious of the user experience, like how they're going to interact with uh, this new security feature that you're introducing. And, and that's why I'm doing this talk. It's like I know that this is a backward incompatible change uh, in, in Solar 9. So if people going from Solar 7 or Solar 8 to Solar 9, um, you're going to have some issues in a few cases, in a few edge cases. Well, one of those cases is if you are, if you are blocking unauthorized visitors, but you don't have any users, which, I mean, you shouldn't do that. They wouldn't be able to make changes to your own clusters. But if you, if you uh, don't have block unknown, which we'll get into, defined, if you're not defining this parameter in security.json, then you're just going to be open to the world. So some people are going to approach this with hesitation, and, and they're not going to be happy about it. Um, so I started my balancing act for, for solar security with basic auth. Basic auth is the most widely used plugin for security. I think it may be eclipsed one day by JWT, but for now, basic auth is the most widely spread, widely used. I think JB, they, JWT was just improved or introduced into eight. So uh, we've got you know s s basic auth will be around for a while. So I'm not going to spend too much time on code because I know we don't want to talk too much about the code. But um, previously in in Solar pre nine, which is the master branch today. Uh, Pre-9, you could create a security.json file, throw it on ZooKeeper, and not specify the block unknown parameter. So here, you can see in the credentials block that um, there are there, there is a user, one user, that's solar, solar rocks. The, that's just a hash of solar rocks or an encrypted solar rocks. And then the authorization sort of establishes the user role. So the solar user is an admin here. So the solar user can do whatever they want to do to the cluster. Um, and you can see the permissions where they can make security edits here. So that's how people set it up today. Sometimes. Uh, they do it a little differently, but this is a, an easy way to set it up. There's going to be another talk on basic auth with Jason Gerlowski tomorrow. I highly recommend you go through it because he's going to be talking about what you need to do today. And, you know, for versions today, this is for the future. So, but just so you have some visual and kind of can get a sense of what's going on here again with, with previous versions, there's an optional parameter, block unknown, and block unknown defaults to false. So imagine if you bought a lock and a key, and you took it home from Home Depot, and you just set it on the counter. So like you, ena you, you enabled security, but it wasn't actually enforced. So that, that's essentially how, uh, you know, basic auth works in solar today, unless you read all of the documentation. But we know that doesn't happen. Uh, clearly, we saw from all those people who'd been attacked by ransomware. Like, I think that it's, you know, really important to set this block unknown to, to true if you have a user. Um, in the future, which I'll get into, in the future, if you try to set block unknown to true and there's no user, we'll throw an error because it now def it defaults to true. So if you, if you set security.json, you don't include block unknown, you will be blocked out. Uh, but you would be blocked out, but it returns an error and it lets you know, put a nice log message in there that said, hey, you must have at least one user configured uh, to, to enable this plugin. So, Basic auth, like you can see here, it's no longer defaulting to false. I mean, when you buy the lock and key, it gets put on the door. 
Does that make sense to everybody? And, and, and I think that the, the reason why I put these up here, these, uh, the, that's the JIRA ticket and that's the uh, GitHub conversation thread, a, a part of them. I want people who aren't familiar with Solar to you know, get some sense of how they can contribute. Uh, you have to file a JIRA ticket that corresponds and you have to work with a lot of people who know a lot more than you do about Solar. So I dealt with that. A lot of patience, but they helped me along the way, you know, giving me tips. So um, I'm gonna do a lot more. And then the checklist, for maintenance and upgrades, if you do have basic auth in your environment, ensure that you have users and that the block unknown parameter is set to true in security.json. Otherwise, Solar will return an error, and you can see that error. At least one user must be configured in security.json. So this is a really important thing. My favorite part about this though is that's all you have to do. I, so I tried not to make it too complicated, though add more security striking that really important balance for, for users so that they don't feel abandoned and that it's easy for them to work with. And there's, there's a lot more of that coming soon to Solar and, and Fusion is already there in a lot of places, but we... <laughs> Thank you all. I think that's... Um, so, do you have any questions? Any questions about this? <laughs>